Come on in. Good morning. I welcome you to this Sabbath, to this worship hour. It is the second Sunday of Easter. And last week we celebrated the raising of Jesus of Nazareth, our Lord, from the grave. And we continue that celebration because resurrection did not just happen once. It began a new way of being, of hope, of promise. This morning, our announcements include a delay perhaps of worshiping together. The council is going to meet and decide when we think we can get together again. We will not meet in person until at least after May 3rd. So um, we will do communion again uh, through the airwaves. Um, other than that, I hope everybody who wanted a t-shirt got one. And please just keep the church in your prayers, not just this congregation, but the church at large as we struggle with the mandates not to gather when we want to so bad. And uh, just, just keep our nation and the world in your prayers.
Would you join me in our call to worship? Just follow along in your hearts, your minds, and your spirits. Holy God, we come before you with awe, for you are great in love and power. Some of us come with reluctance and some with joy, some with sadness and others full of fear. Yet we know you receive us as we are. Mighty God, stay with us always as we worship and as we share the risk and the challenge of living our faith. By your powerful spirit, turn our fear to courage and our confusion to confidence. Touch us, God, with your healing fire. Speak to us through your word. Send us back into the world renewed and eager to do your will. We pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Boys and girls, I wanted to talk to you for just a minute. You've probably noticed that things in the world have really slowed down. A lot of your favorite restaurants are closed. Other businesses in the community, maybe your family is affected by that. Probably somebody you know is affected by that. But I want you to do something for me this next week. As the weather gets warmer, I want you, because you can't play with your friends right now and, and be with um, other people, I want you to really start noticing nature. I want you, when you're outside, to notice flowers, not just from the sidewalk. Go over and really look at a flower. Look how well made, how well designed a flower is. It's fascinating. Look at the buds on the trees. Watch the robins and the rabbits and the squirrels. Because even if this is happening in our world, the coronavirus, God's nature goes on. And God's nature right now is waking up and celebrating a new spring. So notice that. Make your ears really tune in to the birds' songs, to the wind in the trees. Use your nose to smell lilacs, spring roses, even newly mown lawn. Fill yourself up with the wonder of God's creation. And then when we get back together again in person, I want to hear all about it. Maybe you could write it down in a journal and tell me everything you saw, you smelled, you heard, maybe even tasted. Okay? All right, I'm going to say a prayer for you guys. Dear Lord, I pray that you would be with these boys and girls as they struggle through this coronavirus. Now, I know it's hard for children to understand. It's hard for all of us to understand. But God, please be especially near to them and allow them to observe the wonder of creation during this time of relative peacefulness in the world. Thank you, God. Keep them safe until we meet again.
my Savior lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know. Still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Our scripture today comes from the book of John. It continues our story from last week. I'm starting in the 20th chapter, verse 19. That evening, on the first day of the week, the disciples were meeting behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he held out his hands for them to see, and he showed them his side. They were filled with joy when they saw their Lord. He spoke to them again and said, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you refuse to forgive them, they are unforgiven. One of the disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, 
put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. He said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who haven't seen me and believe anyway. Last week, Easter Sunday, we talked about how Mary Magdalene went to the tomb of Jesus. She looked in and then discovered a man who she thought was the gardener standing behind her. And she asked the man, where have you taken my Lord? And then Jesus says her name, Mary. And at that moment, she recognized him. Here we have another setting. And it's a setting of complete chaos, turmoil, and fear. It's the evening, the very evening, that Jesus rises from the grave. And the disciples are gathered into a room with the doors locked. How timely is this passage of scripture for us today? The disciples who had walked beside Jesus, who had claimed that he was the Messiah, the Lord, his very own disciples, who he ate the last supper with, are now trembling in fear behind closed doors. Hmm. And Jesus appears. And three times in this passage, Jesus says, peace be with you. Twice, it was with the disciples without Thomas. The third time, Thomas is with them. And again, Jesus says, peace be with you. Because their doors were still locked. Did you notice that? Even, how, even after Jesus had been with them the first time, they're still locking their doors. I know these are scary times, but Jesus followers, you, my Christian brothers and sisters, this is not the time to be scared and cowering. I know we have to be separate. There's such a thing as being careful, social distancing, it's good. But do not fear. That's what the world would have us to do, is to separate not only our physical beings, but separate as far as uh, believing, separating as far as saying, you're in, you're out. Or more often, I'm in and you're out. There are many people in the world right now who are taking this, this 
pandemic and turning it into a political and a spiritual opportunity to create fear. God does not create fear. The world does. And so I would beg you during these days to not cower, but to reach out through prayer, through reading the scriptures, through lifting each other up. The world will go on, but God is forever. And what we do with God's word and with our faith right now could set the tone for generations to come. Fear not, for God is with you. Peace be with you. That's not just an empty saying. Jesus is saying, peace be in you and through you. Be over you and under you. Jesus brings comfort and hope. And did you notice in the scripture that Jesus breathed on them? He breathed the very Holy Spirit of God on the disciples. That's what we should be doing right now praying the Holy Spirit upon each of us to give us courage during this time, not fear. So please, be the warriors that we always say we are. It's in this time that we need to be strong in the Lord. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Have courage, brothers and sisters. God is here. Amen. At this time, we come as people and we lift up our individual and our communal prayers. Uh, I hope your spirits are staying strong. I had a little bit of a meltdown earlier this week, I have to admit. So I hope you're not experiencing that. If you are, it's normal. We're gonna get through this, we are. So I want you now to just sit quietly, gather your thoughts, all those random thoughts, gather them together. Take a deep breath and then another. And bask in God's love now. Oh Lord, we come to you in the middle of this pandemic, in the middle of this stress and fear, uncertainty. But God, in these moments where we can just be, where we're not coming from something or going to something else. Just now, we pray that your Holy Spirit would minister to us. And the thing is, God, that even in the middle of this pandemic, we have other things going on. We have family that we worry about and jobs, certainly. We have our own health or the health of others that we worry about. And so God, we just need you to wrap us in your arms at this time. 
Speak to us. Breathe your Holy Spirit upon us. Be real to us. In this silence, Lord, hear our prayers. And now, Lord, please hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus the Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I wish I could say, will the ushers please come forward? But we take our offering in each of our homes. I pray that you will continue to support our ministry here at EUCC by sending in your offering envelopes. We will be sending out a letter this week just to keep you updated about what's going on and in that letter there will be an offering envelope so if you would please send your checks we're also taking an offering for the food bank so if you would like to give monetarily to the food bank you could make out a separate check and just earmark it as such and send that in with your offering and thank you so much for remembering us during this time. Let's pray. God, we pray that in each of our homes, as we're gathering up our offering, that you would bless it. And that as it comes together from all those homes and comes together at this church, that you would use it in the ways that you deem good. Thank you for the generosity and the prayerfulness of the people here. And we give you the glory and we thank you for allowing us to be a part of your creation. Amen. Go in peace and go with God. Amen.